The Siege of Szigetvár or Battle of Szigeth, Hungarian, Szigetvár Iksata, Croatian, Bitkukad Szigeta or Szigetska Bitka, Turkish, Szigetvár Kuzatmas, was a siege of the fortress of Szigetvár which blocked Suleiman's line of advance towards Vienna in 1566 AD. The battle was fought between the defending forces of the Austrian Habsburg monarchy under the leadership of Croatian Ban Nikola Subogzwinski, Hungarian, Zrinje Miklos, and the invading Ottoman army under the nominal command of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, Ottoman Turkish, Suleiman. After the Battle of Mohacs in 1526, which resulted in the end of the independent Kingdom of Hungary, Ferdinand I was elected king by the nobles of both Hungary and Croatia. This was followed by a series of conflicts with the Habsburgs and their allies fighting against the Ottoman Empire. In the little war in Hungary both sides exhausted themselves after sustaining heavy casualties. The Ottoman campaign in Hungary ceased until the offensive against Zygdova. In January 1566 Suleiman went to war for the last time. The siege of Zygdova was fought from 5 August to 8 September 1566 and, though it resulted in an Ottoman victory, there were heavy losses on both sides. Both commanders died during the battle, Zrinsky in the final charge and Suleiman in his tent from natural causes. More than 20,000 Turks had fallen during the attacks and almost all of Zrinsky's 2,300-man garrison was killed, with most of the final 600 men killed on the last day. Although the battle was an Ottoman victory, it stopped the Ottoman push to Vienna that year. Vienna was not threatened again until the Battle of Vienna in 1683. The importance of the battle was considered so great that the French clergyman and statesman Cardinal Richelieu was reported to have described it as the battle that saved civilization. The battle is still famous in Croatia and Hungary and inspired both the Hungarian epic poem Siege of Szyget and the Croatian opera Nikola Subogzrinski. On 29 August 1526 the Hungarian forces led by King Louis II were defeated at the Battle of Mohacs by Ottoman forces led by Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. Louis was killed in the battle which resulted in the end of the independent Kingdom of Hungary, as he died without an heir. Both Hungary and Croatia became disputed territories with claims from both the Habsburg and Ottoman empires. Ferdinand I from the House of Habsburg brother of Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, married the sister of Louis II and was elected king by the nobles of both Hungary and Croatia. The throne of Hungary became the subject of a dynastic dispute between Ferdinand and John Zapalia from Transylvania. Suleiman had promised to make Zapalia the ruler of all Hungary. Ferdinand set out to enforce his claim on Hungary and captured Buda from John Zapalia in 1527 only to relinquish his hold on it in 1529 when an Ottoman counterattack stripped Ferdinand of all his territorial gains during 1527 and 1528. The siege of Vienna in 1529 was the first attempt by Suleiman the Magnificent to capture the Austrian capital. This siege signaled the pinnacle of Ottoman power and the maximum extent of Ottoman expansion in Central Europe. The years from 1529 to to 1552 were known as the Little War in Hungary. Following Suleiman's unsuccessful siege of Vienna in 1529 Ferdinand launched a counterattack in 1530 to regain the initiative. An assault on Buda was driven off by John Zapalia, although Ferdinand was successful elsewhere, capturing Gran, Estugum, and other forts along the Danube River a vital strategic frontier. Suleiman's response came in 1532 when he led a massive army of over 120,000 troops to besiege Vienna again. Ferdinand withdrew his army, leaving only 700 men with no cannons and a few guns to defend guns. Kosig, although Ibrahim Pasha, the Grand Vizier of the Ottomans, did not realize how poorly defended Kosegg was. Suleiman came to join him shortly after the siege had started. For more than 25 days Croatian Captain Nikola Jurizic and his garrison of 800 Croats held out against 19 full-scale assaults and an incessant bombardment by the Ottomans. As a result the city was offered a surrender on favorable terms and, although the offer was rejected, the Ottomans retreated leading to a peace treaty between Ferdinand and Suleiman. John Zapalia was recognized as the King of Hungary by the Habsburgs, although as an Ottoman vassal.
The treaty did not satisfy either John Zapolia or Ferdinand and their armies began skirmishes along the borders. In 1537 Ferdinand attacked John's forces at Osijek in violation of the treaty. The siege was a disaster of similar magnitude to that of Mohacs, with an Ottoman relief army smashing the Austrians. Rather than attack Vienna again Suleiman attacked Otranto in southern Italy. Nonetheless, an Ottoman victory at the naval battle of Prevesa. 1538, gave the Habsburg-led coalition another defeat. John Zabalia died in 1540 and was succeeded by his infant son John II Sigismund Zabalia. For much of his reign the country was governed by his mother Isabella J. Jelen, with continued support from Suleiman. John II remained as nominal king of Hungary until he abdicated in 1570 and returned the country to Habsburg rule. A further humiliating defeat was inflicted on the Habsburgs in the Siege of Buda, 1541, when the Ottomans responded to a request for help from Isabella J. G. Ellen. In April 1543 Suleiman launched another campaign in Hungary taking back Bran and other forts so that much of Hungary returned to Ottoman control. In August 1543 the Ottomans succeeded in the siege of Esztergom, 1543, which was followed by the capture of three Hungarian cities, Szekes Ferva, Siklos and Szeged, offering better security for Buda. Another peace agreement between the Habsburgs and the Ottomans lasted until 1552 when Suleiman decided to attack Eja. The siege proved futile and the Habsburg victory reversed a period of territorial losses in Hungary. The survival of Eja gave the Austrians good reason to believe that Hungary was still a contested ground and the Ottoman campaign in Hungary ceased until its revival in 1566. In January 1566 Sultan Suleiman I had ruled the Ottoman Empire for 46 years and went to war for the last time. He was 72 years old and, although having gout to the extent that he was carried on a litter, he nominally commanded his 13th military campaign. On 1 May 1566 the Sultan left Constantinople at the head of one of the largest armies he had ever commanded. His opposite number. Count Nikola Subogzrinski, was one of the largest landholders in the Kingdom of Croatia, a seasoned veteran of border warfare, and a ban, Croatian royal representative, from 1542 to 1556. In his early life he distinguished himself in the Siege of Vienna and pursued a successful military career. Suleiman's forces reached Belgrade on 27 June after a 49-day march. Here he met with John II Sigismund Zapolia who he earlier promised to make the ruler of all Hungary. Learning of the Zrinsky's success in an attack upon a Turkish encampment at Siklos, Suleiman decided to postpone his attack on Egypt. German, Erlo, and instead attack Zrinsky's fortress at Zygtva to eliminate him as a threat. The advanced guard of the Turks arrived at on 2 August 1566 and the defenders made several successful sorties causing considerable loss to the Turks. The Sultan arrived with the main force on 5 August and his big war tent was erected on the Semilov Hill giving him a view of the battle. The Sultan had to stay in his camp where he received verbal battle progress reports from his Grand Vizier Sokol Umemd Pasha, the real operational commander of the Ottoman forces. Count Zrinsky found himself besieged by a hostile army of at least 150,000 soldiers with powerful artillery. Zrinsky had assembled a force of around 2,300 Croatian and Hungarian soldiers prior to the siege. These consisted of his personal forces and those of his friends and allies. The majority of the defenders were Croatian, with a significant Hungarian contingent represented in both the men at arms and the leadership. Zygtva was divided into three sections divided by water, the old town, the new town and the castle, each of which was linked to the next by bridges and to the land by causeways. Although it was not built on particularly high ground the inner castle which occupied much of the area of today's castle, was not directly accessible to the attackers. This was because two other baileys had to be taken and secured before a final assault on the inner castle could be launched. When the Sultan appeared before the fortress he saw the walls hung with red cloth, as though for a festive reception, and a single great cannon thundered once to greet the mighty warrior monarch. The siege began on 6 August when Suleiman ordered a general assault on the ramparts 
although the attack was successfully repulsed. Despite being undermanned, and greatly outnumbered, the defenders were sent no reinforcements from Vienna by the Imperial Army. After over a month of exhausting and bloody struggle the few remaining defenders retreated into the old town for their last stand. The Sultan tried to entice Zrinsky to surrender, ultimately offering him leadership of Croatia under Ottoman influence. Count Zrinsky did not reply and continued to fight. The fall of the castle appeared inevitable but the Ottoman high command hesitated. On 6 September the Suleiman died in his tent and his death was kept secret a great effort with only the Sultan's innermost circle knowing of his demise. A courier was dispatched from the camp with a message for Suleiman's successor. Selim. The courier may not even have known the content of the message he delivered to distant Asia Minor within a mere eight days. The final battle began on 7 September, the day after Suleiman's demise. By this time, the fortress walls had been reduced to rubble by mining with explosives and wood fueled fires at the corners of the walls. In the morning, an all out attack began with fusillades from small arms, Greek fire, and a concentrated cannonade. Soon the castle the last stronghold within Zygdva, was set ablaze and cinders fell into the apartments of the Count. The Ottoman army swarmed through the city, drumming and yelling. Zrinsky prepared for a last charge addressing his troops, let us go out from this burning place into the open and stand up to our enemies. Who dies, he will be with God. Who dies not, his name will be honored. I will go first, and what I do, you do. And God is my witness, I will never leave you my brothers and knights. Zrinsky did not allow the final assault to break into the castle. As the Turks were pressing forwards along a narrow bridge the defenders suddenly flung open the gate and fired a large mortar loaded with broken iron, killing 600 attackers. Zrinsky then ordered the charge and led his remaining 600 troops out of the castle. He received two musket wounds in his chest and was killed shortly afterwards by an arrow to the head. Some of his force retired into the castle. The Turks took the castle and the most of the defenders were slain. A few of the captured defenders were spared by Janissaries who had admired their courage, with only seven defenders managing to escape through the Ottoman lines. Zrinsky's corpse was beheaded and his head taken to the Emperor while his body received an honorable burial by a Turk who had been his prisoner, and well treated by him. Powder magazine explosion Before leading the final sortie by the castle garrison, Zrinsky ordered a fuse be lit to the powder magazine. After cutting down the last of the defenders the besiegers poured into the fortress. The Ottoman army entered the remains of Zygdva and fell into the booby trap. Thousands perished in the blast when the castle's magazine exploded. The Vizier Ibrahim's life was saved by one of Zrinsky's household who warned him of the trap. When the Vizier and his troops searched for treasure and interrogated the survivors, while inquiring about treasure the prison replied that it had been long expended, but that three thousand pounds of powder were under their feet to which a slow match had been attached. The Vizier and his mounted officers had just enough time to escape but 3,000 Turks perished in the explosion. Almost all of Zrinsky's garrison was wiped out after the final battle. Ottoman casualties were also heavy, three pashas, 7,000 Janissaries and 28,000 other soldiers are said to have perished. Sources vary on the exact number with estimates ranging from 20,000 to 35,000. After the battle the Grand Vizier forged bulletins in the Sultan's name, proclaiming victory. These announced that the Sultan regretted that his current state of health prevented him from continuing with the successful campaign. His body was returned to Constantinople while the inner circle of officials pretended to keep up communication with him. Turkish sources state that the illusion was maintained for three weeks and that even the Sultan's personal physician was strangled as a precaution. It is likely that the long journey and the siege had a detrimental effect on the Sultan's health. His death meant that any advances were postponed as the Grand Vizier had to return to Constantinople for the succession of the new Sultan, Selim II. Even if Suleiman had lived his army could not have achieved much in the short time that remained between the fall of Szygath and the onset of winter. The prolonged resistance at Szygath delayed the Ottoman push to Vienna. Two ambassadors were sent by Emperor Maximilian, Croatian Anton Vrancic and Styrian Christoph de Fenbach. 
They arrived in Istanbul on 26 August 1567 and were well received by Sultan Selim II. An agreement ending the war between the Austrian and Ottoman empires was reached on 17 February 1568, after five months of negotiations with Sokol Memd Pasha, also known as Memd Pasha Sokolovic being originally from Bosnia. The Treaty of Adrianople was signed on 21 February 1568. Sultan Selim II agreed to an eight-year truce, although the agreement brought 25 years of, relative, peace between the empires until the Long War. The truce was conditional and Maximilian agreed to pay an annual tribute of 30,000 ducats. The Croatian Renaissance poet and writer Bukhan Arutic, from Zadar, wrote the conquest of the city of Szeged, Croatian, Vazd Szeged Agrada, sometime before 1573. His work was posthumously published in 1584 in Venice. This is the first Croatian historical epic dealing with national history and the Battle of Szegedva. It was inspired by Marko Marulic's Judita. The battle was also immortalized in the Hungarian epic poem Szeged i Vazidlum, Peril of Szeged written in 15 parts by Zrinski's great-grandson Nicholas VII of Zrin, also a ban of Croatia, in 1647 and published in 1651. This was one of the first such epics in the Hungarian language and was also inspired by Marulik's Judita. Kenneth Clark's renowned history civilization lists the Szygeti Vezidlum as one of the major literary achievements of the 17th century. In spite of the author and other members of Zrinsky family being fierce enemies of the Turks, the poem never demonizes them. The Turks are portrayed as human beings and a love story between Dilaman the Tatar and the Sultan's daughter Camilla is interwoven into the main plot. But as Rinsky, Hungarian, Zrinia Peter, the brother of Nikola VII Zrinsky, published Opsida Sijeka, 1647 eighths, in the Croatian language, not surprising since the Zrinsky family were bilingual. Another Croatian nobleman warrior poet Pavaritovite Zovic, 1652 to 1713, wrote about the battle. His poem Odilgenj Sigetsko, The Zyget Farewell, first published in 1684, reminisces about the event without rancor or crying for revenge. The last of the four cantos is titled Tombstones and consists of epitaphs for the Croatian and Turkish warriors who died during the siege paying equal respect to both. Ivan Zajk's 1876 opera Nikola Subog Zrinski is his most famous and popular work in Croatia. This recounts the heroic defiance of the Croats towards the Turks, as a metaphor for their later nationalist impulses within the Habsburg monarchy. Zrinski is depicted in the plot as a 16th century Croatian hero who defeated the Turks a couple of times before perishing sacrificially along with his family and close supporters, in the siege of Szygeth Castle. The opera is patriotic with a famous area Uboj, Uboj, 